We're going to talk. Get ready. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And I don't guess you could live amazing uh, if you have problems with... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When the fingers <laughs> full, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a bad day for everybody. This whole video has gone to... <laughs> but it's really an important part. If you have never done any RVing before, you don't realize how much it's a factor. We can meet people, right? We can meet people in a campground and start talking... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a uh, it's a common subject in in campgrounds around the country. And we actually have a discovery today that is a game changer. But first of all, we want to let you know that if you stay in campgrounds, roughing it is what having no sewer. Right. So do, of course, when you're in most campgrounds, you have water and electric, but having sewer hookup is no guarantee. But having the sewer means a different kind of living. It means you can take long showers instead of sea showers. It means you can run the water more and not have to worry. Yeah, and if you have a washer and dryer, you can wash clothes without worrying about filling up your gray tank. For us, I, I like to make hash browns, but rinsing the potatoes after you grate them takes a lot of water. You have to rinse them. I, I rinse them usually three times to get the starch out of them. Uses a lot of water. So if we're boondocking or if we're dry camping, there are no hash browns in, in this rig. <laughs> so yes, life, if we don't have sewer hookup, if we don't have, that means that we have to be very, very conscious of our water use. It means we don't take showers. I can go a week without a shower. <laughs> It's true. And there are things that we say, for instance, if it's yellow, be mellow. I mean, I mean, it's pretty gross, but you just have to just watch every drop of water. And there are actually campgrounds where people wait in line to get a sewer hookup. We go to campgrounds where there's just not sewer everywhere, right? Right. The Thousand Trails Park in LaConnor, Washington. So we met some new friends, hi Mike and Sarah, at LaConnor, and they had a sewer site, and they're like, we're leaving in the morning, and they texted us about 7 mm -hmm. in the morning, we're about ready to pull out so we could get their sewer site, but guess what? Yeah, they called, or they texted, said, oh no, some people are... Some people are staking are, are out our staking site. Staking out the, the site. So, <laughs> so sewer can be that important. There are truly game changer items that you can have in an RV life. This is one of them. It took me almost two years to finally buy this, um, but I'm so glad we have it now. What it is is a macerator, and um, it's also a pump. It um, kind of a combination between a pump and a blender. This is step two of the solution. Talk about how you were able to use the macerator and how it was just so easy. We were actually, we were in Idlewild and we were in a non-sewer site and we were going to be there for three weeks and I thought, well, now's the time. So I had been looking at macerator pumps for a while now and, and I just held off on buying it because it's, you know, it's a $250 investment after you get the hose and everything to go with it. I just didn't know if it was if it was worth it. I finally ordered one and it got delivered there and man what a game changer. So the macerator because it's the word macerator I think it's chewing up. The it's solid. a blender. It, it's a blender. It, yeah it's basically a blender and, and it's just chewing up the, the solids that come out of the black tank. And have you ever had it clog or? No. Nope. If you want to have things easier for you when you're out camping and you know you're going to come up, you know, across campsites that don't have sewer, step one is to get what's called a tote. And what size tote should you get? When I bought the one that we have, I had the bumper pull trailer and it had 27 gallon tanks. So I got one as close to that as I could get as far as capacity so that I wouldn't have to worry about overfilling <laughs> you don't want you don't want to overfill your you black do tank not. Your, uh, tote with black water no um, no because then you'll have <laughs> everywhere yes you will yeah, <laughs> yeah. so i got a 28 gallon tote you got to consider size we have 50 gallon tanks if i want to clear all of our tanks it's going to be two or three trips to the 
to right. the dump so let's station. Back up. All right, so let's back up. So first of all, you want to know the size of your black tank and try and get a tote that is slightly bigger than your black tank. Yeah. Before you buy it, you want to make sure that you have a place to store it. So when you're traveling, so most people either tie it on the back. On the ladder. On yeah. the ladder. Yeah. Or they put it, if they have a pickup truck, in the bed of the truck. And that's what we do. And so empty, the 28-gallon tote is about how much? 10 pounds, 20 oh, pounds? Oh, I'd say 20. 20 yeah. pounds. So that's the other thing. You know, it's a big, bulky thing. If you're buying a 50-gallon one, it could be 30 pounds, right? Yeah. So you yeah. want to make sure you can handle that. And it's okay to buy a tote that's smaller than your tank because we have one. You just have to be a little more aware of how quickly it's filling. A lot of people have the tote, but they still want sewer hookups because the tote can be by itself just a pain in the ass to fill it up, right? Yes. The problem is that depending on how far away the dump station is, you might not want to hook it up to your hitch and, and tow it somewhere. So what I've started doing is I put the tote in the back of the truck when, when it's empty because when it's full, 20, 28 gallons times eight something. You don't want to be messing so with that. Yeah. So you're not lifting that up into the back of the truck. But what I do is I put it in the back of the truck when it's empty. I use the hose that I got with a macerator. And yes, you can use a garden hose, but the hose I bought is much larger. And uh, I just thought that would be worth the investment. Um, less likely to clog even though it's being you know ground into liquid now if you have a class a and you're towing a jeep you could just put it in the back of the jeep right yeah just I suspect, open yeah. the back door and put it in the back empty of course and then fill it so the the macerator has a pump in it and it's pumping uphill to the tailgate of the truck mm -hmm. or the back of the jeep mm -hmm. yeah they say the macerator will pump three feet uphill I didn't measure it, but I would guess that we were about at three feet when we were dumping in, in Idlewild. Step one, you get the tote. Step two, you get the magic macerator. Yeah, so you could have just a tote, but you will find that it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> and you'll still want sewer. And why is just the tote a pain in the ass? Well, in our case, and, and I've noticed this on a lot of the bigger rigs, I'm not sure why they do this, but our sewer um, outlet is about a foot off the ground if that if that yeah so it is actually below the tote so the so when you're using a tote you've got to find a spot where the where you can if you can you've got to find a spot where the tote is below that line so you need if you're on level ground forget it it's not mm -hmm. going to happen and and water doesn't flow uphill very well no i don't know if you've noticed that about gravity but it's it doesn't right. it doesn't go uphill so that's one part that where the totes a problem another part is just getting that heavy tote which now you've got it full you actually have to manhandle it oh yeah over yeah. to your truck yeah and yeah. hook the handle on the ball and, and get yeah. it over there yeah. yeah yeah and a lot of people just don't want to do that so you've taken out the muscle from this. You don't right. need any muscle to do this job, the right? The only muscle you're going to use is lifting a, t you know, 20, 25 pound tote. Into the, the empty tote. The empty tote into the back of your vehicle. And of course, if you're new to RVing, you may not know this. If you've been RVing for a while, I'm sure you do. But you always dump your black first and then flush it with your gray. Right, because your shower water is just shower water. It's yeah. clean. Yeah, it's pretty clean. It's just water with soap in it. On the macerator, uh, there are two connections. One is the outlet that is basically carrying your wastewater. And the other one is the inlet. So that if you, let's say you just wanted to dump your, your black tank and you, and you, for whatever reason, you're not going to dump your grays to flush it. You can actually use the other, the inlet port, which has a valve on it, an open and closed valve. You can turn the water on, open that ball valve and it will flush the macerator because you certainly don't want to take the macerator off and have black water dump all over the ground and all over yourself. So this answer is not for everyone, but it's certainly helpful because you have to do this like once a week for the two of us living here. Mm -hmm. And that's about an hour probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say an hour. Yeah, I would still rather have a sewer. Right. But I don't, I'm not going to pick a site just because of the sewer issue. Yeah, if you look at some of these RV sites online, like the, the um, forums and stuff, there'll occasionally be this question, what would you choose, a gorgeous site or sewer hookups? Would you want the view 
or do you want the sewer connection? And you'd be surprised how more people choose the sewer connection versus that. So this way, you know, we would choose the we would choose the view oh, for the sewer. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Every time now. Most parks do have something a service called a honey wagon mm -hmm. who that will come and empty your tanks, but they charge twenty five I've I've heard as much as fifty dollars. Yeah, it can be we've seen it lower than twenty five occasionally. We saw eighteen dollars once, but you also need to ask them is that per tank? They may get there and say, oh, that's $18 for the gray and $18 for the black. Yeah. So that can add up pretty quick. Yes, it can. Just to be clear, we're not advocating that you waste water at all, but we prefer to shower more than once a week, but we definitely shower less when we are. Right. Yeah, if we're, if we're dry camping, we, we think about showers before we get in and take one. Right, so now if you're boondocking, this may not be such a good solution because of the water issue. You're likely going to have to come back into town to get more water, mm -hmm. so a macerator may not help you then. But if you're anywhere connected to water, let's say you're driveway camping, you're mooch docking in someone's driveway, the macerator could really be a game changer for you too. And you might even be able to do it without, without a tote. I mean, if you're, if you're close enough to the clean out uh, mm -hmm. on their sewer, if you're interested in getting a macerator pump, just know that it does need to be wired directly to the battery. Liz doesn't want me to get too technical here, but it's a 20 amp dedicated circuit, uh, which means that you're going to have to run at least 12 gauge wire. I use 10 because that's what I had, uh, but 12 gauge will suffice. By using the link below, you won't pay any extra, but you will be helping support our channel. And thank you. So tell us your <laughs> stories. <laughs> Talk to us in the comments. We want to hear your tips. So the power button to the macerator looks just a little scary, don't you think? I wonder what will happen when I push it. <laughs>